I made a video, I believe the name of it is 29 signs you have a demon living inside of you. And some people were asking for scriptures on it, which is not a bad thing to ask for scriptures. That is not a bad thing. But let me place everything in context. Let's go to John chapter 21 and 25. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written, amen. So what is that saying there? Everything that pertains to Jesus Christ is not written in the Bible. Am I saying that you should reject the Bible? Of course not. I believe the Bible is good enough to go to heaven with by following the rules and regulations of it. But what I am saying, all the information about anything is not written in the Bible. For instance, let me make some examples. Let's say that I am speaking to person A and I am telling person A that ripping a person's eye out is a sin. And let's say that person A says, okay, show me where in the Bible where it says ripping a person's eye out is a sin. Show me exactly in the Bible where it details it out in the Bible where it says that it is wrong. There are some people out there like that. The Bible does not speak about, per se, about ripping a person's eye out. But we know that is wrong. Let me use another example. Let's say I tell person A again, look, doing drugs is wrong. Smoking marijuana is wrong. Smoking crack, doing cocaine, meth, abusing pain medications is wrong as well. And let's say that, okay, let's say that person A says to me, show me scriptures where it says per se or the exact words as in marijuana, crack, meth, the pain medications that I am abusing. Show me in the Bible where it says that doing these things are wrong. Some people think like that. The Bible is not going to have the words marijuana, crack, meth, and the pain medications that you are abusing. It is not going to have it there. If you want to know if something is wrong or right, look at the end result of it. Is it any good to you or to other people? On top of that, do you think God would allow people to do that in heaven? Do you believe that God is going to allow people to smoke marijuana in heaven? Do you believe that God is going to allow people to smoke crack in heaven? Of course not. So if the answer is no, nine times out of 10, it is a sin. To go back to what I was speaking about, 
I made a video about 29 signs that you have a demon living inside of you. And some people were asking scriptures to prove that those things, they wanted something, I assume, they wanted something detailed. Like, hey, blah, 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 that is a sin. And what he said here, I need something that is telling me exactly in a detailed way that this is a sin. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit, what is the fruit of the Spirit? The attributes of the Holy Spirit. When you begin, when you repent of your sins, and began to follow the rules and regulations of the Bible, you are going to obtain these attributes here. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which is patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, which is humility, temperance, which is self-control. Against such there is no law. So if a person has the Holy Spirit, that person is going to have these attributes. Let me ask you a very simple question. Very simple. Let's take a person who cuts themselves. Now, is cutting yourself does the Bible say that if you cut yourself, you have a demon inside of you? From what I saw, I don't think so. I don't think the Bible details it as if they are saying word for word, if you cut yourself, you have a demon within you and you have this type of demon within you. The Bible does not detail it in that way. It does not. But we know that it is wrong. It's cutting yourself an attribute. <laughs> ah, it's cutting yourself an attribute of the Holy Spirit. Like, hey, I see this person cut themselves every day. This person has the Holy Spirit within them. Do you see that attribute in these list, in this list of attributes? Of course not. On one side, you have God. On the other side, you have Satan. If something is not of God, who can it be of? What spirit is it of if it is not of God? You would have to conclude that it is of demons, of Satan. So if you see a person constantly cutting themselves, they have a demon. The Bible does not have to say if you see a person cutting themselves every day, they have a demon. Or if you see a person cutting themselves every so often, they have a demon. The Bible does not have to detail it in that way. But some people want it detailed in that way. And if it is not, that is like a sign to them that they can continue doing what they are doing, which is wrong. Another example. Let me see. If you see a person, every time when you meet them, it is like their personality changes 
really fast, like one day or for one hour. When you meet them, they are really happy. Then you meet them another time. They are really sad, like their personality always changing, like you like you never know how they are going to act toward you. Like their personality, it's like they have more than one personality. From the fruit of the Spirit, the attributes of the Holy Spirit is having multiple personalities an attribute of God. Of course not. If a person has many personalities, as if there is about five or more people within them, those are demons. If it is not of God, it is demons. I pray that this makes sense. But what some people want, hey, if a person has multiple personalities, they have a demon living inside of them. They want the Bible to have a detailed out like that, which the Bible is not. For instance, a person that stays depressed all the time, from age whatever to whatever age they are now. They have been depressed for a very long time. Where is depression in the fruit of the spirit here? I see love, I see joy, I see peace, I see patience, long suffering, I don't see depression in here. Like I said before, some people want the Bible to say if you have depression or long-term depression, you have a demon living inside of you. We can clearly see that depression is not in the list of attributes here for the Holy Spirit. Is depression of God. No. So it have to be of demons. So if you see a person always depressed, always talking negative every day or whatever, they have demons. I have been meeting people I believe all of us have some type of fear of something. What I am speaking of, or what I am going to speak of, people who are afraid to do anything, people who are afraid to drive, people who are afraid to do anything pretty much or to do basic things that type of fear that is a demon where is fear or that type of fear that extreme fear in these attributes i don't see it so if you are operating within extreme fear like that which is very common almost some people that I speak to operate in that type of fear. That is demons. That is not of God, is it? I grant thee extreme fear. Walk therefore in this fear that I give you. That is not God. That doesn't even sound anything of God. So if it is not of God, then you know that it is of demons. If something is not of God, it have to be of demons. It have to. What else can it be? 
what spirit are you operating in? It is a spirit of a demon. It is a demon. So Kevin, show me scriptures on that video about signs of having a demon. If it is not of God, it is a demon. Those things that are named there, I may have to check another time, but from the last time I checked, those attributes are not of God. So if you have, if you have them, <laughs> this is really simple, man. This is really simple. Ask yourself, are you serving God? Chances are no. You are not following the rules and regulations of the Bible. And you have these attributes, those attributes of having a demon inside of you. If you are not following God's rules, then the chance of you having demons is like, pretty much 100%, very easy. Because some people who were asking for scriptures, chances are they are not serving God. And it makes no sense if you don't have the Holy Spirit within you, what are you going to have in you? If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not going to have these attributes. So if you don't have these attributes, what does that mean? That means you have a demon within you. I don't know why that is so hard for people to accept. If you don't want demons to be within you, what option do you have? You can change you can begin to follow the rules and regulations of the Bible. You can do that. You don't have to stay the way that you are now. So that is, like I said before, John 21 and 25. The Bible is not going to outline every single thing in a detailed way. Hey, if you act like this, you have this demon and to cast it out, you have to do this and you got to do this and blah. The Bible is not going to detail everything out for you in a very cute way. It is not going to do that. This is why it is important to have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is going to counsel you and teach you how to get rid of things and teach you more things of God. There are people that receive dreams, visions, and other things of God. When people see that people's visions and dreams are not in the Bible. They call them false prophets or false teachers and stuff like that. If a person's dream or vision goes against what the Bible is saying, I can understand you are being cautious. I understand that. But if it doesn't contradict what the Bible is saying, how can you call them a false anything how much information does the Bible have about angels and demons and stuff like that not even a lot just a tiny bit all the demons the different types of demons how they operate and everything like that it's not in the Bible. This is why I was saying it is best for you to have the Holy Spirit.
so you can be taught by him. I pray that this makes sense. So the videos about signs of having a demon, if something, if a quality is bad within you, like cutting yourself or wanting to argue with people all day long for no reason or you are easily hurt, someone says something basic to you and you get your feelings hurt or you feel like everyone is picking on you, or you feel like everyone is your enemy, that is a demon. How can those things be of God? Think about it. Getting easily hurt, how is that of God? Why would God make a person on earth to get hurt easily. You are hurt easily. I'm not saying it is your fault per se. Yes, bad things may have happened to you, but you don't have to stay that way. So you staying that way and listening to the lies of demons, hey, you are allowing entry for demons into your life, no matter what happened to you. Some people like to have pity parties. Oh, poor me. These people done this bad thing to me. Demons. You are allowing demons within you. And that's why people cut themselves because they replay over and over and over again the bad things that happened to them and want to have pity parties for themselves. And even while they are doing wrong, they are still holding on, my Lord. They keep on doing wrong. What happened to them, per se, was, was not their fault. But what happens, now they do wrong. And the consequences for doing wrong, when it comes back upon them, they blame other people for it which makes no sense. You are now responsible for your actions. What happened to you happened to you. You don't have to continue to do wrong because that bad thing happened to you. You have to accept responsibility now after that bad act have happened to you. I pray that makes sense there. Everything is not going to be detailed out in the Bible. Asking for scriptures is not a bad thing. It is not a bad thing. But in the context you are looking for scriptures for, you are not going to find it in that way because the Bible is not going to have everything detailed out like that. That's why you have to look at other things and place other things in context. The fruits of the Spirit. Very simple way to see if something is of God or not of God. So I pray that this makes sense. God bless.